Hello and welcome to CNBC TV 18's Davos Diaries. It is now time for us to get a wrap-up note on what has transpired here in Davos, uh, what the Indian government has been able to take back as far as feedback is concerned, and more importantly, what the road ahead looks like. Minister Beshnav joins us. Thank you very much, sir, for joining us here. That's what I want to start by asking you. Uh, at the end of these four days where you've been here talking to investors, talking to other leaders, what's the biggest takeaway that you go back with? I think the biggest takeaway is that people have understood Prime Minister Modi ji's economic decision, economic policy very well. Uh, there was a section within the investor community which thought that is it just a fluke, is it just one off? But they have now understood that yes, this entire policy is a very consistent policy. It's going to give us a good six to eight percent healthy, consistent growth over the entire decade. So that gives huge confidence to people who would like to invest in India. There are some very clear uh, proposals which we have discussed with certain, with many people, which would amount to more than 5,000 crore investment in the country. Any specific sectors? Uh, telecom, yes. Good investment is likely to come. Railway, very big investment is likely to come. So this is a very good uh, time for. <clears throat> excuse me, international investors to look at India as a consistent growth story. That was one big takeaway. Second big takeaway was that India's stack is now very well understood. Uh, Prime Minister's Digital India vision, how it has transformed lives of people at low income levels, that is highly, highly appreciated. The third takeaway, uh, takeaway is that uh, India's emphasis and Prime Minister's personal commitment towards climate goals, that is highly appreciated. People, when they came to know that among the large economies, we are probably the only one which is having 42% of its power generation capacity coming out of non-fossil fuels. So that is something which is which was revealing for the entire country. So people are looking at India as not just a supply chain destination, but a very important talent destination, very important design destination, very important innovation destination. From a supply chain point of view, because you did talk about the fact that this is where you hope to attract uh, fresh investments as well as grow investments. Uh, what is the indication? What is the feedback? Is there something more that needs to be put on the table to ensure that we get a larger share of the supply chain diversification that is currently underway? So two things which have very clearly come out of discussions are, first, people really like that we are putting so much emphasis on talent. For example, in semiconductor, we are we as a country have committed 85,000 talent to be developed over the next 10 years. And our promise has been delivered because so far we have already tied up with 60 institutions. We have already created the BTEC and MTech course curriculum. We have already created the PhD programs. We have already tied up for shop floor, uh, in this case, clean room uh, technician training. So this is what the global community is saying that India promised one, two, three on 1st of Jan 2022. Mm -hmm. And before just even, uh, I mean, not even 13 months, and India has delivered on those promises. Mm -hmm. So that is giving lots and lots of confidence. What global community is telling us is that, yes, we, uh, we must, uh, everybody should understand that these are long haul decisions. Mm -hmm. These are not decisions which happen in quarters. These happen in years. And whatever happens once stays for multiple years. You're right uh, that these are long gestation projects uh, and require deliberation. But on the issue of semiconductors, since you spoke about that, uh, the Vedanta Foxconn uh, uh, joint venture that is looking at getting into the semiconductor space, where are we in the approval stage at this point in time? And how soon uh, can we expect that to take off realistically? So we very clearly promised you that uh, it would be a 14 to 16 month time frame. We are well in uh, position to take the first few calls. Um, I wouldn't be, it wouldn't be appropriate for me to take any names or make any announcements here, but uh, wait for the cabinet decisions as and when they come. Okay. Uh, cabinet decisions specifically on what, sir? On the semiconductor, the final decisions. And there is a good response from multiple uh, players and uh, people also, I mean, the pipeline has just started is what I would say.
Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, one of the, uh, the constructive feedbacks that we've got from industry is that the railway modernization program has actually moved very, very swiftly, and they're actually hoping that that could be replicated on the defense side in other sectors. That would be great. Uh, what has made that uh, move as swiftly as it has? Because that's the feedback that we're getting. What have you changed uh, to ensure that there is speed uh, uh, as far as the process is concerned? Um, if you look at it, uh, Prime Minister's vision for railways that if you can transform railways, then you can transform the entire economy. Railways is so important for the logistics cost, so important for moving a billion plus people. So he gave us a target that we have to create technology absorption constructs. How do we create those technology absorption constructs? One, yes, uh, we create contractual structures and we create uh, uh, we create a scenario in which the risk between the private sector developers, the technology partners, and the government is very balanced. It cannot be one-sided, it cannot be lopsided risk. It cannot be that the government would put the entire risk on the private sector. It has to be very carefully balanced. It has to be very carefully allocated. Risk allocation is very, very important in a contractual structure. So we have identified exactly what we want to do. And that identification is based on two factors. One, our domestic demand. Second can this be a major export potential for the country? That is the first piece of it. Second, we have created such contractual structures and constructs where we take away the risk out of the equation and very balanced risk allocation process we are following. So we feel confident that in three years from now, India will become a major railway export uh, country and uh, telecom export country. You know, you talked about telecom, sir, and I want to understand from you, one of the vexed issues which continues to be on your table is the issue of Vodafone. Uh, and that has been on now after the government's approvals for the conversion of debt to equity. It's still uh, uh, waiting for a final decision on when that, if at all, and when it will go through. Uh, what's holding back that call at this point? See, Voda needs capital. Uh, for capital to come in, capital has to come in either in form of uh, equity capital or debt capital. Uh, conversion is a non-cash uh, transaction. Non-cash transaction is not going to bring capital. So uh, what's important is that this is a very complex issue. I wouldn't like to comment more than this. But certainly, uh, certainly we are engaged very closely with the um, current shareholders and make sure that uh, there is enough capital is brought into the company so that it survives. Capital from the promoters, you mean? Yes. Uh, let me ask you about the PLI schemes, because you gave us an indication that the government is looking at the possibility of more sectors being added. Uh, any ideas on which of the sectors that you believe will benefit the most if there were to be a PLI? Has there been an identification of the new sectors that could be included? And can we expect a decision uh, uh, you know, perhaps even as part as uh, part of the budget. Um, um, see, the the success of PLI is today very well known. Uh, the payoff from PLI scheme is clearly understood. The entire PLI scheme is about one lakh ninety seven thousand crore, and uh, this this much investment which the government is making is actually returned back just by one PLI PLI of the mobile phones, by in terms of additional GST that you get. So we believe that, yes, this is a great story which has created jobs, which has created new ecosystems, which has deepened the supply chain in the country. So we are definitely looking at more sectors and uh, sectors which have good employment potential, sectors which have strategic uh, importance for the country. These are the sectors we are looking at. Any timeline by when we can expect that decision? <laughs> Wrong question. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Mr. Vaishnav, always a pleasure. Thank you very much for joining us here in Davos and taking us through what this has meant from a perspective of taking the India story global and more importantly, what we can expect back home on the road uh, to further reforms and more measures. Appreciate your time. Well, that is it then on this edition of the CNBC TV 18 Davos Diaries. We'll be back with more, but for now, goodbye and thanks for watching.